Wednesday, Lagos was on lockdown. Totally. Um, in fact, there was reports that, oh, the deputy governor is taking one way. I'm like, yeah, right. So that, that, that doesn't sound like him. But the truth is, we keep having these tankers falling down. Mm. We keep having this gridlock in this Lagos state. Mm. It's, can we preempt some of these things and find a way to manage it better such that that morning, Lagosians would have been aware that this has happened though. Mm. Plan your morning somehow. We, we expect that, get me, you're building a mega city. Some kind of information should have gone around to us, don't mm. you think? Well, so, so first of all, I didn't take one way. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've never, you know, never, why would I take one way? For what? I was coming on third mainland, so I couldn't have right. taken it one way right. anyway. So I don't know where that came from. So we know that there are about 18 locations in Lagos. When there is a great lock there, the whole city will lock up. Exactly. We know that. Now, the challenge is this. As a people, I've lived in the United States for 14 years. Every time when there is going to be summer, you <coughs> must change certain things in your vehicles. It's not, it, it, so these things are a process. If the process doesn't flow, there will be trouble. So part of the challenge is that we have vehicles, all these articulated vehicles that are 40, 50 year old. Yeah. The question is, should they be on the road? No. At the same time. So they, 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 that's the question. Should they be on the road? Mm. So remember, when VIO takes over a vehicle and check it, people say, oh, they are taking who bad? They are, it's not. So as a people, we must also be ready to say, this, let us follow a process to make life easier for all of us. Because you've said, you know, it's a process. That's why I'll bring this question. We know the tankers are in Lagos because of capitalism. Starting from the Apapa, all the way through Kirikiri, along the lagoon, all the way to almost Badagri now, you have tank farms springing up every day. Mm. And it seems like the government just wants to turn a deaf and blind, deaf air blind eye to the issues of the people living around who are clamoring that this cannot continue. Mm. Added to that are bonded terminals. So we are bringing articulated vehicles into Lagos, whether by choice or by choice. Mm. We want them because this is a capital city and capitalism is just thriving. Why is Lagos State reluctant to regulate at least? Because if you cannot stop, there must be sincere regulation of the activities of these people. Enforcement. Mm. And, and strong enforcement mm. of this. Thank you very much. You see, so, you know, we've all been talking about restructuring our country. Lagos, they don't give permit if you want to build a tank farm. DPR does. We've gone to court. We've gone to Supreme Court on this issue during Ashwaju and during BRF. The Supreme Court said, no, that's the constitutional thing. So what are we supposed to do? Mm. So the reality is somebody can stay in Abuja and give a permit. Mm. And Lagos, State has no control. There's nothing we can do. So one of the things we've done is, OK, in building this, your tank farm, in building this tank farm, these are the things you must do. So that, if, God forbid, if there's accident, you don't kill so thousands of people. So that's the issue of, of enforcement now. So, but that is Those on your are. side. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the trucks, remember, Atlas Cove came through Lagos. Yes. The reality is, those in the Jegun, for example, the, all the tank farms re represent about 60% of the fuel that the whole country uses. We agree. There so is the challenge is, you also don't want to kill the economy. So everybody say, oh, the... <coughs> <laughs> risk being ease of doing business and the rest. So one of the things that we, we've had four meetings with NMPC, with the ownerships, everything. So like we said, it's also a process. When are we going to stop this tide of settling people with contracts? And when is Lagos going to really get serious about getting roads fixed? Mm. So there's a difference between rehabilitation and palliatives. Mm. So sometimes, because the resources are not enough, you go and say, let's go give people relief, even if it's three months. Mm. So probably what they are doing at that time is let's do some palliatives. So what that means is this. So a road, a road has different layers. So it has the sub course, which might be sand or whatever it is, and then it has a, a, a bider course and a wearing course. So by that name, a wearing course is the one you drive on. Mm. That wearing course, it will wear away. Mm -hmm. Because the, you know, it's bitumen, it will wear away. So normally what you do is you remove that binder course. Mm. But if all the things be done, if they are it's bad, so what you just do as palliative is, okay, let's just do that. We know it will wear off mm. with time. So sometimes you just go in there to say, let's just do palliative, give people relief for six months, whatever, what? until you have enough resources to so actually In finish. addition to what she just asked, why doing the palliatives 
if you can you know save up the money if it's funds that's the problem and do a major road so we don't have this issue of you have to keep redoing the roads. And secondly, who is in charge of quality control? Because it's very possible that the materials, even for the palliatives, are not what is obtainable outside the country. Lagos State, for example, we have our own asphalt plants. Okay. So we have three of them. We have in Ojodu here, we have in Badagri, and we have in Emata. Okay. So we produce and we have a lab where we also test our materials. Okay. So the challenge is not that the quality. The challenge is the tonnage on our so you cannot over design a road. Mm -hmm. Because when you over design a road, you spend a lot of money. But like I said, it's a wearing course. Technically, it must wear off. You have water, it's a chemical. So water and bitumen don't like each other like that, but it will happen. So ultimately it will dissolve and move away. Now the challenge is this: to actually remove and maintain them, it's expensive. Mm. So what but you will notice that the BRT lane are actually concrete. Mm. The other one is not concrete. So what we are doing now is everything concrete. But that increases the cost by 40%. Mm. It's the same part. Yeah. So that 40% reduces <coughs> our ability to go somewhere else. Right. Mm. Because it's the same part. But we said, okay, let's go and, let's go and buy the bullet and just do it. On, mm. But the reality is it will break again. Maybe five years, maybe six years. Somebody will have to come back okay. and do it. All right. Again.